They didn't stand a chance, those Jews in Babylon. Not at the hands of an arrogant, power-intoxicated, egomaniacal tyrant who had devastated Jerusalem, desecrated the temple, despoiled their women, conscripted their men, and driven their population into exile. They didn't stand a chance. Not against this king who could summon satraps, prefects, governors, counselors, treasurers, magistrates, and every provincial official with a single snap of his royal fingers. Not this king whose edict stirred the sounds of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of instrument. Not this king who in his delirium thought he was a god and who made a gilded image of himself and by executive order demanded that all people bow down and worship his image with the threat of incineration for those who refused. They didn't stand a chance, those Jews in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, resident strangers in a strange land, exiles, aliens in a land not their own, among a people not their own, who by the blessing of God rose to high positions in the government. As every mistrustful Chaldean eye watched and the Chaldean press waited to pounce on even the slightest misstep. With their lips, they confessed the creed of Israel. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our God, Yahweh alone. And in their hearts, they feared, loved, and trusted in no other gods than Yahweh. They would not take part in the civil religion of Babylon. They would not heed the king's orders, and they would not bend the knee to Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. And there were no courts of appeal, no masses marching in the streets on their behalf, no stays of execution. It was the power of Babylon versus three resolute Jews who would not bow to an idol. And who is the God who would deliver them from the flames of the king's wrath? The God who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and dry land, the God who called forth light and life by his word, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who forged his people in Egypt, birthed them in the parted sea, and raised them in the wilderness. The God who gave them Torah and prophet, the God who sent his son, Jesus, the Word made flesh, the child of Bethlehem, the man of sorrows, the crucified one. He is the God of the gulag and the concentration camp and the killing field, who does not abandon his children nor forsake his promise, who walks with them not only in the cool of the day, but in the heat of persecution midst the flames of the fiery furnace until they rise up with every numbered hair on their heads unsinged. You don't stand a chance, O child of God, against the forces of darkness, the powers and principalities, the rulers of this age. Oh, the world and its princes may embrace you. They may court your vote. 
They may toss you a bone or a biscuit, or a biscuit like some lap dog, and even promote you to some high places and positions. But refuse to bend your knee to their gilded image, dare to suggest that they have no authority except that which is given from above, deign to point out that their golden idols have feet of clay, and you will find yourself in the company of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Refuse to bend the knee, and the flames await you. The fires of Babylon still rage against the children of God. They rage in the desert of the Middle East and in China. They rage among the socialists and Islamists and secularists of our own time and place. There is a little Nebuchadnezzar in every ruler. And there is a little Nebuchadnezzar in every one of us. The old Adam, who wants to be a god, who wants to control others by power and force, wants the whole world to bow down before the image that he has set up. And when you know this and understand this, you will not trust in princes or politicians in mortal men who cannot save you, no matter how much power they wield or how great the promises they make. Cross them and they will kill you. Dare to confess that we ought to obey God rather than men and they will crucify you. But fear not the fire of the king. Fear instead the fire of of God's wrath. And know this, dear child of God, that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego goes with you. He is the fourth man in the furnace, one like a son of the gods, one who is the son of God, Emmanuel, God with us to save us. He is there in the prison camp among the persecuted for righteousness' sake with those who suffer torture and hardship and loss and death for his name's sake. He calls them blessed, those who are cursed and slandered and persecuted. And he is with you in your time of suffering, your time of testing, he will be with you in your fiery furnace. He is the image God has set up. He is God's sacrifice, his whole burnt offering, offered up in the flames of his wrath against your sin, offered up for the life of the world. Jesus has gone the way ahead of you. He has endured the fire of the law, borne you with him in his humanity, taken you to his grave, raised you up in his resurrection, and exiled and exalted you to the highest positions in his kingdom. Yes, he will raise you. He will raise you on that great and glorious day when every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. All the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, the officials, the presidents, the prime ministers, the princes, the two-bit dictators. On that triumphant day, when the trumpet of God will sound, along with the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every sort of instrument, every tongue will confess Jesus, 
King of kings and Lord of lords, to be Lord and Christ, to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.